2013 has presented me with a world that I'm not sure what to call. It has taken me on the scariest roller coaster possible, never falling short of allowing me to experience every uphill, downhill, and loop de loop of emotion there is, sometimes in the time space of 24 hours. I feel ruined. I am worthless. I'm a useless head girl. Why me? Hi, my name is Arizona Ledger. I am a brown face of fruit salad genetics with an open mind and a colorblind perspective on society. I once faked my way out of running a school cross country when I was in primary. <laughs> I thought I was pretty clever. My mom, not so much. I get cheeky, I make mistakes, and can never understand why society is so resistant to the idea of change. I've had two different pieces of media exhibited in two New Zealand museums. I am 18 years old as of last week, and began my high school years down in the Waikato before transferring to one of Auckland's more prestigious high schools in 2011. And most importantly, for today's talk, after two years of schooling here in Auckland, I was appointed the Honourable Head Girl role for 2013. The Why Me passage I shared with you was something I wrote down after an incident that occurred between myself and the senior management at school one day. The incident led me to dwell on what I thought were the flaws in my leadership. I was convinced that everyone wanted to drag me down and that no one wanted to help me out or lend a hand to lift me up. My high school years have seen me as the kid who would step out of her comfort zone to encourage others or make them feel welcome. I was full of life, sucked at saying no, and was always late to class due to the numerous catch-ups with people en route. But regardless of the situation, no one ever seemed to have an issue. That was my nature. That was the Arizona I knew. I didn't do it for a badge or to get recognition. I did it simply because I wanted to. But this gold badge is probably one of the most powerful weapons I have ever come to witness. It has brought out the good, the bad, and the ugly in me, and inhabits a magical power to taint society, allowing their assumptions and expectations to rocket sky high to a level that is in no way attainable, even by Einstein, Galileo, and Newton combined whilst tippy-toeing on the shoulders of Yao Ming and Michael Jordan. Call me over-exaggerating if you must, but this year has led me to feel like a tiny ant under a massive microscope with a beaming spotlight. And for any scientists out there, you'll understand that with a strong microscope and some hot rays of light, fires will spark. And boy, did I burn. It took me over half a year to hit what I would call rock bottom. I started to believe the negative comments I was hearing and began walking around in defeat with the typical, I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders, but I'm too afraid to ask for help, so if someone asks me if I'm okay, I'm just going to look at them and say, I'm fine. Hiding my emotions away, I found myself in absolute tears on the floor in my room weekly. I wasn't enjoying anything and was doing things for the sake of it. I became in Arizona that neither myself nor my peers had ever been introduced to before. Doubting my abilities and qualities as a leader, I began to question my leadership. Why me? I'm not the right fit for this mold. It was like trying to fit your feet into shoes that were many sizes too small. Relevant, being an islander with big feet, but when it comes to islanders, they also love to eat and I felt like this year had fed me with too much wisdom, criticism, and responsibility that I was so full, I could barely breathe. However, it was through writing this talk that I realized I focused solely on the negatives of my role, and continuous complaining and nagging wasn't actually going to get me anywhere or fix anything. If I wanted things to change, then I needed to realize that Regardless of the way people critique my leadership, it is a major honor in the eyes of many to even be given this opportunity. I needed to understand that it wasn't given to me for what I saw in myself, but for what others saw in me. Leadership is an attribute. It's a decision. It's not a job you get paid to do. 
It's not about how many badges you have, how many certificates you receive, the amount of likes you can get on Facebook, or the amount of questions you can answer in class. It's a package of service and hard work. It's about the amount of time and effort you are willing to give towards the community you are leading. It's about the extent you are willing to go to prove your point, even when the odds are against you. It's about the amount of passion and pride that you have for what you are leading and using that as motivation to get up and lead them through another day. They say a leader is someone who takes the first step forward into the unknown that no one else even dares to consider. But to me, a great leader will not only take that first step forward, but also backflip, moonwalk, and time warp all over it. And the most rewarding thing about it is that they will encourage everyone else in the room to shine in their own spotlights too. I came to realize that in order to be a leader, you must be willing to work harder than everyone else, expect no credit, and accept every criticism. It's not about the amount of gold that can reflect off your collar, but the amount of gold in your heart for what you were doing. So, as with everything in life, instead of trying to change the world around me, I changed my approach to leadership. I learned a few lessons, and it's these lessons I have decided to share with you today. The handy five that kept me alive. One, make sure your contact lenses are clear. There is no time in your day to see the world through rose-tinted glasses or let the color of one's attitude, skin, or in my case, school logo, intimidate you. Emphasis on the clear. There is no time for your vision to be blurred by expectations and judgments of the people around you. In order to keep your eyes on the prize, you must have good vision for the mission. Two, shine bright like a diamond. During the harder times of my year, a good friend of mine told me, Arizona, you are a light. Regardless of how much it flickers, as long as it'll lit, it will always shine in the darkness. In fact, the darker the night, the brighter you'll shine. What I want to pass on to you today is that it's a dark day, not a dark life. Bad days will come your way, but continue to remind yourself that this is only one day. The world of leadership can be a major power cut at times but it's those dark times when you need to shine brightest. Because although it may seem dark for you, you might actually be the light of many other people's days. Three, go to the gym and pump some weights because the badge weighs heavier than it looks. With the honor comes the five kg power bags per responsibility and high expectations. Don't let it weigh you down. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So even when you do make mistakes, Bench press those lessons you learn from them and go into each day ready for a new battle, leading me to my next point, four. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. This saying was used in the first 15 rugby team my dad coached a few years back. The team were nothing flash, they weren't big in size, nor were they absolute superstars. Everyone wrote them off and had a total lack of faith in the team's ability to get anywhere in the season. This never held them back, though. They set out to prove that it's not about how big you are in size, but how big you are in heart. As a result, they ended up qualifying to play in the New Zealand National Rugby Final and became the nation's second best rugby team for that year. I've taken this example to show you that there are always limitless possibilities for you to defy the odds. Everyone can be a leader in their own right. If you have the heart for it, then there is no reason to let anyone tell you who you can and cannot be. Defy the impossible. Five, here I have five fingers, one hand. You were only given two hands, and these hands can only carry and do so much. Delegate. Use your hands to gesture to others. Thank you, please, no, well done, and most importantly, help. I was useless at asking for help at the right times, and that was a significant contributor to why I would feel so low. Your hands are like transformers. They are more than meets the eye. Make use of them. Don't let the influence go to waste. You see, there's a reason it's called leadership, not lead a sink or lead a boat. See, ships are big enough to carry boats, whereas boats 
They don't have the same capacity to carry ships. Leaders carry their followers in a similar way as they navigate their waters towards brighter days. I read somewhere that, it, that an entire sea of water can't sink a ship unless it gets inside of it. Similarly, the negativity of the world can't put you down unless you allow it to get inside of you. It took me the entire year to realize that leadership is hard. It can make you feel worthless and useless and leave you wanting out. But what I forgot was to embrace the positives and learn from the negatives rather than dwell on them. Life wasn't going to say, you're a great leader, uh, just wait, I'm just gonna give you an awesome leadership role and an easy as year ahead. Life is full of challenges. And every challenge, I would run away from them screaming, why me? But after recent conversations, revelations, and presentations, I have solved the X in one of my hardest life equations yet. And hopefully, it is something you can all apply to your lives too. The next time a challenge approaches you, with the intention of weighing you down, don't leave it up to the pretty boys with the badges and the titles. I don't want you to lead a sink. I don't want you to lead a boat. But I do want you to lead a ship. Whip out your handy five, and instead of saying, why me? I want you to turn around, stare that challenge in the eye with the heart of a great leader, and say, try me. Thank you.